Hello and welcome to the crypto channel where we try and bring you the news without the hype. First thing we're going to look at is this isn't political at all, right? Elon Musk, this is from John Deaton. What a joke. The SEC gov has become. The SEC has become a weapon used to protect the incumbents and the status quo. And this is SEC launches investigation into Elon Musk's purchases of Twitter. So Elon Musk, he's... Uh, yeah, being targeted by the SEC, uh, I believe this is in hand in hand with Elizabeth Warren. I'm pretty sure Elon Musk um, has filed a harassment claim against Elizabeth Warren. <clears throat> but who knows? You would have thought they would kind of support what Elon Musk is doing because he's one of the he's a, a shining example of the Amer American dream of where you can kind of you can get everything from coming from not a lot and that's what Elon Musk is doing it's amazing what Elon Musk has done in such a short space of time considering what most people achieve in a life and what Elon Musk has achieved um, it's insane especially all his stuff that he did with PayPal and you know he's he's been around for a long time and he's been very successful for a long time okay I thought this was um, interesting uncomfortable truth your struggles will only be admired after you become successful on your journey, nobody gives a F about you or what you go through. you got to keep pushing though every through every single obstacle. When you make it, they'll either call you lucky or ask you how you did it. I happen to have a family member who's uh, trying to be a writer. And they've been trying for over 10 years and they write absolutely fantastic novels. Um, they're genuinely gifted and I don't say that just because they're a family member. They always had a gift even as a kid when they did things like uh, <clears throat> drama or theatre arts. Uh, they were always like the shining kid within the theatre the theater arts groups. Whenever they did performances, they were always the the one that everyone remembered. Um, you know, the kind of the kid that everyone went, one day you're going to be famous, you're going to be on TV, you're going to be, you're going to be doing something with creativity. And like this says, um, you know, Nobody cares about the struggles, but when people are successful, they go, wow, how did you do it? Um, and you're like, well, I struggled, I struggled. And I think it's relative to what people do in the crypto space. I think a lot of people in the crypto space, well, they have become very, very wealthy over the last bull runs. And I think they will continue to become wealthy over future bull runs. And people will go, wow, you, you're so lucky. And I think these... Uh, it won't be luck, it will be years and years of work behind the scenes that people don't see. And that's kind of what people in the XRP and all other crypto communities do. There's so much work and research done behind the scenes to get a really accurate pulse of kind of the crypto market so that you, you're so in sync with them. And there was a fantastic, uh, it was, I, oh, what's his name? It was... He's a billionaire. He's very, very famous. It's Warren Buffett. And Warren Buffett was talking about become an expert in two things. So a lot of people go, well, if in order to be a successful investor, you need to diversify. And Elon Musk says you diversify once you've made the money. But to begin with, you become an expert in two things, one or two things. And so I believe his companies that he liked was Coca-Cola. I forget the other one. And as he said, if you become an expert in those two things or one thing, you will know more about that one thing than any, anybody else. So even if you're talking to a billionaire investor and you're an expert in whatever, whatever thing you're interested in, you'll know more about that thing than that, bi than that billionaire investor because you have become an expert. And the, the gift of becoming an expert in that field is you will know when it's oversold or when it's undersold. And that's where the large amounts of money can be made. And so I think the message often gets diluted where people go, oh, well, sorry, I've got all things making noises around me where so many things people go, oh, well, you need to diversify in order to make money. Well, actually, the initial kind of comments from people like Warren Buffett were you need to become an expert in one or two things if you want to be an investor, that is, become an absolute expert. And that's what I try and do in the crypto space every single day, just look at it, research it. This is a relatively new channel. It is a new, it's a new channel. I haven't been doing it for very long. And I had listened to influencers over the years and I've been doing my own research since 2017. And I just thought I've been doing this for so long. I enjoy doing this for so long. And my family is so sick of hearing about cryptocurrencies, XRP, Bitcoin, you name it. 
uh, I decided to do this channel because I enjoy talking about it. I think it's a, I think it's a fascinating space, and I think it's amazing that <clears throat> kind of financial markets are able to, especially cryptocurrency financial markets and XRP in particular, has such a huge army behind it because people have such a such an interest in this space and finance is generally boring it's typically a really dull subject i mean i wouldn't want to sit on a tax lecture even though i know i probably should learn more about tax because i find it boring cryptocurrencies xrp xrp community what ripple is doing i find it fascinating i find it interesting i find that we are getting to watch the reshaping of the world right before our very eyes and most people don't know what's hitting them so a lot of people are watching the news just going, we live in such a dystopian world now and it seems absolutely crazy. But if you follow the money and a lot of these blockchain companies are going to be kind of integrated into the future systems they want to create, it starts to help you build the picture of what they're trying to do, what the powerful are trying to do, etc. Okay. Kobayashi letter, mortgage demand is now at its lowest since 1995 as rates continue to skyrocket. The average interest rate on a 30-year mortgage just hit its highest since August 2000 at 7.88%. Mortgage demand is even below the average level seen in the 2009 crisis, as shown in the red below. So they're basically showing a, a chart. Demand in the housing market is coming to a complete halt. The craziest part, it doesn't matter because there's no supply. We are in weird times, so people, a lot of kind of market or housing property specialists are looking at this going you know the interest rates going up it's just going to be absolutely catastrophic for the housing market but the problem is there's not enough properties for people kind of thing so you always have that supply and i don't know what's going to break first and how it's going to play out that is a million dollar question in itself but being a parent of two young children, I'm really concerned of how they're going to afford to have their own property when they're older. Because salaries to property is just gone so far out of control. And if with young kids, you're just kind of wondering, well, how much different will it be when they're older? Because we've seen how crazy it can be within. So where I live within about the last 10 years, property prices have basically doubled in 10 years. And salaries definitely haven't doubled. They'd, they've gone up maybe by a few thousand pounds, but they certainly haven't doubled. Okay, brings me on to a perfect point. If you're thinking about retiring soon, just remember, after the 20, after 1929 market crash, the Dow Jones did not return to its peak close of September the 3rd, 1929 for 25 years until November the 23rd, 1954. So after the 1929 crash, the Great Depression, Dow Jones took 25 years to return to its peak. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of uh, retirees will have their money in the stock market. And if things happen in the stock market, like a lot of people are predicting, and you see a massive crash, a massive recession, or even a depression, uh, a lot of people are going to be working a lot, lot longer than they thought they would be working. Okay, Mitch XRP. Uh, it's always, I can't, yeah, this is kind of what I was talking about in regards to Stephen Nairoff on a previous video. Uh, Micah XRP goes on to say it's always I can't show the receipts because of this or that or the reply to show the receipt is always be patient or it's due in time and someone might get hurt as much as we XRP community have been through the past couple of years I am super skeptical of anyone coming in basically saying this and this is in regards to Stephen Nairoff saying I'm one of the only people who has the list of ETH given out to contributors. Exposing this list publicly could endanger many honest, well-intentioned people who worked on Ethereum. All documents are, in store, are installed in many places with multiple layers, with multiple lawyers rather, land others so they're safe. So yeah, basically he's saying he has the disguised whales list um, from the Ethereum. But he's not going to release it because it could hurt some well-intentioned people. And you're kind of like, well, why say it? Are you are you just trying to get a following? You, I mean, what are you doing? Are you just trying to be relevant? I don't know what you're doing. Um, if you've got it, show it. 
if you have things that need to happen, like you're working with John Deaton and certain legal things need to happen, well, maybe let those legal things happen. And then when you actually have a result, come to the community and say, today, I'm going to give you some information you might find useful instead of uh, just teasing people along week after week after week. I don't particularly enjoy that approach. Uh, I think it's very... It's very in line with what people do on social media of kind of clickbaiting of, oh, we'll watch to the end of this video because I've got some really good pieces of information or uh, all tomorrow you must tune in because I've got some breaking stuff. OK, Gold Telegraph. Iraq will ban cash withdrawals and transactions in US dollars as of January the 1st, 2024. Crazy things are happening around the world. We're seeing more and more developments in the BRICS nations. Um, a lot of people buying gold, a lot of countries buying gold. Uh, huge differences of price between gold in China and gold in uh, the West. About $100 difference at the moment, which is record highs. I think the highest before was about a $6 price difference between China uh, and the rest of the world. And now you're looking at $100. So, yeah, things are very strange. I'm toying with whether or not to talk about this subject. But if you remember the Iraq war, as the Iraq war started, the uh, Saddam Hussein had come off the... He was stop, stopping trading oil in the petrodollar. Then the Iraq war kicked off. And conveniently, all of a sudden, Iraq was back on the petrodollar. Back in the day, things would happen when countries stepped out of line from what America wanted, the West wanted. Um, they would impose sanctions. Often you would see conflicts, things like this. Now so many countries are all standing up together. It's impossible for this, this inevitability of the decline of the petrodollar. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, i.e., this year, that's it, everyone's going to stop using it because all these systems are so intertwined with one another. Right, it'll be a slow, steady kind of roll down uh, where people will just use it less and less and the reserve dollar status one day will be no more. And the question is, what will replace that reserve dollar status? I'm sure every country would love to have to be the reserve currency of the world. But the problem is every other country doesn't want somebody else to be the reserve uh, currency of the world. So will something else come up in the XRP community? You often hear things like XRP is going to be the reserve currency of the world. I don't think XRP will be the reserve currency of the world. Maybe a crypto could. It's possible. It's feasible. Uh, do I particularly think it would be XRP? I think there's so many out there that... I don't know. This the, It depends kind of who wins these fights so you've seen the sec uh who's basically been trying to protect the incumbents they've been attacking crypto as much as they can but for what it uh f for what we're seeing crypto is winning i mean uh, xrp just won the lawsuit in regards to xrp sales on the secondary market which is really everything that the sec cared about with crypto because they want to say that all of these cryptocurrencies are securities so a group of very powerful people behind the SEC targeting crypto. They don't like this kind of decentralized technology that's forming because it is. It is a threat to the, every single currency around the world, which is why they're trying to come up with their own system, which is the CBDCs. They want to be in control of it, complete control of it. And if they get CBDCs, they will have even more control than they have now. Um, and they'll get all the benefits of what crypto do does, but it certainly won't be a decentralized kind of technology. So I really see that there is this huge struggle, this fight of the world where either we enter a dystopian, complete power controlled, top down power controlled, or we slowly go into a decentralized world where power would also be de decentralized because everything evolves around money. If that money was decentralized, where you have these kind of blockchain cryptocurrencies that no one can print any more of they're already out there they're completely decentralized no one has control of them which is really the goal of most of these cryptocurrencies now or a lot of them um, no one can influence them no one can do this or that 
no one can basically print more of them and decide to do endless wars around the world, for example, because wars cost a lot of money. So the world will be very different. It just depends which side win. It's kind of like a good or evil. It's like every good Hollywood movie, Star Wars, good versus evil, who's going to win? You know, for the incumbents, for the people in government, they think that the decentralized system is evil because it takes power away from them and gives it to us. We think uh, decentralized is fantastic and we think CBDCs are evil because CBDs gives them the power and takes power away from us. No one wants to lose their power. So, yeah, it's what it is. Kevin Cage can't wait for the next bull run when everybody gets along again. It's nice when every crypto community m member realizes we share the common goal of crypto becoming a major asset class. And uh, I'm looking forward to that during the next crypto run as well. I think there is still a lot of good uh, kind of vibes out there within crypto, especially now, because I think a lot of people are anticipating bull runs being around the corner. But yeah, certainly during the bull runs, I imagine it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, the kind of the atmosphere. Okay, just a few things I wanted to go over and then we will call it a day on this video. So kind of the news over the last day is 24 central banks to have CBDCs by 2030. Um, so more and more yet, yeah, central banks are looking at the CBDC plan. Okay, BIS wraps up cross-border CBDC trial. And I often think when they talk about they've just wrapped up a cross-border CBDC trial, for example, that it means they probably wrapped up quite a long time ago and they're happy to give this information out to the public now. But the reason why I'm so focused on the Bank of International Settlements is because so many resources that I research talk about Bank of International Settlements argue, arguably being the highest, uh, power, most powerful structure on planet Earth in terms of the money. And the money is all about, the power is all about the money, the money is all about the power. So you've got things like the Kissinger model where you have government and then you've got the World Economic Forum and the Club of Rome. Above them is the central banks and at the very top of the pile is the Bank of International Settlements. So when the Bank of International Settlements speaks, I listen. And so, yeah, BIS wraps up cross-border CBDC trial. We know that Ripple has partnered with BIS. Uh, they're part of their task force. Who knows what the future will hold, but I'm, I'm hopeful. That's good. I mean, it's, it's great news. Not the CBDC part. I personally hate the fact that the world is going down the CBDC route. But for investors, if you're in Ripple, unfortunately, well, fortunately for investors, but unfortunately that it's tied to CBDCs, uh, you may do very well. OK, Metro Bank shares plunge on fundraising reports. So I was looking into this article and I think Metro Bank is around about 600 million in the hole. So they're looking to get 600 million. Where they're going to get 600 million from, I don't know. But it goes to show uh, just how many banks are in trouble. I put out a tweet from Robert Kiyosaki where he said, I think it's 750 banks are on kind of a certain watch list of not being particularly healthy. And if you think 750 banks, how many people would that affect if 750 banks, for example, all went down together? I mean, it would be catastrophic. And you've got we're just seeing this all the time. We are at that time of recession, possibly depression, where you're going to start seeing more and more banks. I wish it wasn't the case. Um, I never want society or humanity as a whole to hurt, but I'm just here reading you the news. Bond markets gyrations are yanking us into uncharted territory. Again, just there's just the news is just constantly talking about uh, unstable markets, really. Uh, crypto friendly Congressman McHenry temporarily takes over the US House. I know nothing about McHenry, uh, Congressman McHenry, so I can only take the article's word that he is pro crypto. And if he is, uh, that's fantastic. Crypto firm Ripple secures uh, Singapore payments license. So this is new news. They they were they had been given a a promise of a license before, but they hadn't been actually given the license. So now it has been confirmed that they actually have been given their payments license in Singapore. So as always, Ripple is working behind the scenes, uh, constantly trying to push their use case and the use case of XRP for all our holders. Okay, once again, BIS. 
Bank of Inter International Settlements, EU central banks building data platform to track crypto DeFi flows. So people tell you they're not interested in crypto. You can say, well, the Bank of International Settlements and the European Union central banks, they're building data platforms to actually track what's happening in crypto and DeFi flows. And the last one, no, there's a couple more. FTX customers are still grappling with crypto platforms collapse. So a lot of us see about FTX and go, oh, that's really bad. But imagine you had huge amounts of money invested in it, uh, in FTX, and it just got wiped out. You just lost everything. You would be, yeah, I mean, it would have destroyed your life. I know when Terra Luna collapsed, you had investors that were unfortunately taking their own lives because they literally went from millionaires to owning nothing, literally nothing. Um, and it, the same would have happened with FTX customers. So I can only imagine how some of those people are feeling and the emotions that they feel when they see, uh, see a picture of Sam Bankman Freed. Crypto wallet making Ledger to lay off 12% of staff. So the crypto wallet maker Ledger is to lay off 12% of staff. Again, company after company, you just read during these financial times, they're laying people off. They're letting people go. Uh, I was reading an article saying that the top four accounting firms in my country in England uh, and their international firms are laying off a percentage of their workforce. You just hear it more and more and more. Uh, so it just kind of reinforces the the evidence behind the economy is not great. Uh, another article that talks about Sam Bankman Free, the crypto king's wealth was built on lies, prosecutors say. And uh, yeah, that is it. That is everything that we have for today. So again, on this channel, I try and bring you articles and news that I think is relevant to crypto uh, or just interesting or just the financial world as a whole. I try and follow and listen to a lot of podcasts from a lot of influencers to kind of pull this knowledge together for, for this show and just generally have a bit of a chit chat on this show. I don't want to tell you what to think. I just want to literally give you the facts and have this as a kind of food for thought exercise, exercise where you go away uh, and kind of have a digest the information and make your own world views of how you think this space and how you think this market is going. Uh, so that is everything. Thank you very much for watching. This is not financial advice. This is just for fun. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe. And if you want to support this channel, then please hit the like button. Thank you very much.